Welcome to the Blender 2.56 Complete Modeling Tutorial for Team Fortress 2. In this tutorial, you will learn how to create custom models that you normally call skins. This model will work for hats, weapons, and pretty much any other type of model like static props that you can use for map making. Although this tutorial will be catered specifically to TF2, you can use this tutorial for any source game. One last bit before I begin. This tutorial is mainly for beginners, so if you already know how to model and you're just looking for a way to get your models in-game, then I urge you to skip to part 3, which deals with that. Okay, part 1 of the modeling tutorial. This is going to deal with modeling, and the very first thing I want you guys all to do is to stay organized. So the first thing is we're going to create a new folder, uh, wherever you want, and just name it whatever. I'm going to name mine Blender heavy and open that folder and create two more folders one called input and the other one called output and we're, I'm gonna talk about what we're gonna do with these folders in the later part and you can close that for now that's this is just to stay organized we're gonna save all our files in this folder so um, in the video description, you're going to see links to all of these uh, programs that you're going to need. Um, there, there's far less than the previous tutorial. Um, but anyway, what you're going to want to do is go to the Blender website and go to the 2.5a beta uh, location and, and download the zip. Uh, if you have 32-bit, download this zip, and if you have 64-bit, um, download this bit right here. You don't want the installers because it doesn't work when you're trying to add um, add-ons. So just download the zip instead. Uh, I downloaded this one. Uh, next, uh, download the SMD import export tools. Um, it's this amazing program, uh, or not program, uh, script. I get and so just download that. Uh, I'll explain how to install that. And you're going to want Notepad++. Although you can do this tutorial with any notepad, just regular notepad, uh, this is far superior. So download this. Um, the next two are a little bit more confusing on where you put them. You can't put them anywhere. So the GUI Studio MDL and the uh, Cannon Fodder's um, MDL decompiler, you want the 0 0.5 version. D download both of those, except you have to put those specifically in your Steam, Steam Apps, your username, source SDK, bin, episode 1, bin folder. They have to be here. As you can see, I have uh, GUI Studio MDL here and the MDL decompiler here. They must be here because they use um, DLLs that are necessary for these two programs to run. Um, and what you can do is you can just shortcut to the desktop. So I have them right here for easy access. Um, and I'll explain those a little bit later. So, And the last two things you need are a VTF edit and GCF scape. VTF edit is for making the VTFs, which are the textures, and GCF scape is for extracting files from the TF2 GCF. And you also need uh, Photoshop or GIMP. Uh, Photoshop, you I think you need to pay for that, and, or you can get GIMP, which is free. I used to use that, but um, I use Photoshop now. Um, so, and then we can get started. So once you have all of that, uh, what we're going open up Blender. And it's going to look like this. This is the default uh, layout. And we're going to change a couple of things. So the very first thing we want to do is we, we notice that there's only one uh, screen here. We're going to want more than one. So if you click here in the upper right-hand screen, when your cursor looks like a plus sign, you can drag over a second screen. And you can just close this. You can just close that. Uh, and you get two screens. And now what we're going to want to do is just... Uh, in here, I like choosing new window, this panel, so that whenever I render an image, it opens it up in a new window rather than right here. Uh, and then we're going to go to file. Uh, actually, before we do this, um, I'm sorry, I forgot to explain this. When you downloaded the uh, SMD tools, a lot of people had problems installing the SMD installer. And I'm going to explain how to do that. So extract the uh, uh, the SMD script, and you should get this IO underscore SMD underscore tools script. Just copy and paste that into your Blender 2.56 <coughs> A beta folder, which should be uh, extracted at this point. And here is where the actual program is run from. Uh, click 2.56, go to scripts, add-ons. And if I ha already have it installed, as you can see right here, 
all you do is you just drag it into there and uh, we're good. So you can close that out. Um, in, in Blender, go to File, User Preferences, go to Interface, click Auto Perspective, uh, which changes it from orthographic views to perspective views, depending on what you're, when you rotate the camera. Go to Add-ons, and what we're going to want to do is we're going to scroll down to Import, Export, SMD Tools right here, and just check that box on. And you can click Save as default. I'm not going to do that because I already have a default saved, but you can click that. That's it's very useful. Everything else should be fine. Um, in Blender, you select things with the right click. Uh, you can change that if you want from this input tab, but uh, I'm used to selecting with right click, so I'm going to stick with that. So once you're done with that, you can close it. And if you did that correctly, you should see that now if you go to File, Export, or Import, you get this option for Studio MDL Data. That's how you. That's the f uh, file format we need for Source Engines. So <clears throat> now what we're going to do is I'm going to explain really quickly how um, you move around in 3D space in this program. So um, to rotate, you press middle mouse button and you just drag around. This is to rotate. To pan, I press shift and middle mouse button and I just drag around like that. I'm panning. Um, to zoom in, I scroll. That's And to move, to move an object, I can press the, key, the G key, move that around, uh, and then uh, left click to uh, lock that in. Uh, control Z is to undo. Um, control Shift Z is to redo. I think, yeah. Um, S, if you press the S key, you can drag out to scale. If you press the R key, you can rotate. Um, you can also use these, um, I forget what, the, I always forget what this is called, but um, the, I'll just call it the 3D manipulator widget. You just click right here, left mouse click to move that in a specific axis these little things. You could change that down here. This is the uh, move, rotate, and scale. So if I want to rotate it this way, I can do that. Um, I usually don't use this. I, I'll, I'll leave that off, but uh, some people will prefer using that, so that's perfectly acceptable. If you want to do things in a specific axis, you can either use the widget or you can use the middle mouse button. So if I want to scale in only this uh, Y axis, uh, you can scale and then press the middle mouse button to scale inwards and outwards. Uh, so <clears throat> if I wanted to uh, to rotate in the y-axis then I would um, press the R button and then middle mouse button to rotate in that specific axis. Same with the G uh, moving, the G key moves, If that, that would be the uh, moving in the x-axis. Um, and then finally I think I covered the basics. Uh, if you want to switch views, um, I like working with the the top view um, and the side view and the way or the front view. Sorry, and the way I do that is you press the on the numpad. The seven key corresponds to the top orthographic view, and the one key corresponds to the front view. And you can see as if I move it, it automatically goes into perspective mode. So that's what we want because if you didn't have the auto perspective turned on, it it, it, it uh, stays in orthographic view and it looks weird. Um, so, yeah. And the one one last thing I want to talk about uh, that's very essential is object mode versus edit mode. Object mode, as is, I'm using object mode here, as you can see. Uh, it's just the the base outline, or I mean, out, what am I talking about? The, it's just the I don't really know how to explain it. Um, I can't edit individual vertices in object mode, and it's everything is with with respect to the world at this point instead of with respect to itself. So the object center, when I move it in object mode, stays in the center. But if I move it in edit mode, which you access by right-clicking to select the object and pressing tab to go into edit mode, I can now edit individual vertices or um, move the object but keep its center right here. So it's moving with respect to itself rather than with respect to the world. As you can see, this little orange dot is the center. If I go into object mode, the center moves with the object. Okay, so I'm going to go back into this front view. And um, one last thing. this There's a button down here. Um, let's see. If I go into uh, uh, edit mode by pressing tab again, there's a button right here. And it says limit selection to visible uh, clipped with uh, 
depth buffer. So if I if I turn that off, um, it, it it's now not limiting to uh, the drawing vertices to where I can see them. It's uh, it's it's like an X-ray view of things. I can see vertices that I could normally not see behind, and this is very useful when you're you're wanting to see everything that's going on. And uh, so I usually turn that off, so that's uh, so I can see everything. So now we're actually going to begin. Uh, now that you know all the basics of moving around, um, I again uh, urge you to uh, look through all the uh, linked t t tutorials for this uh, program because it's it's quite hard and intimidating at first, but once you get it down, it's it's very useful. So uh, we're going to go ahead and delete this default cube by selecting it, right-clicking it, and pressing delete and hitting OK. And we're going to import uh, a heavy, the heavy model. So we're going to import Studio MDL data and you go in the C folder, go to Program Files, Steam, Steam Apps, you click on your username, go to Source SDK Content, TF, Models SRC, Player, and uh, whatever character you want. I'm going to choose the heavy again. I go to Parts, SMD, and here is the, the model, the heavy model. So I'm going to import that SMD. And as, it, as you can see, it imported the heavy model. Um, the smoothing is is not uh, uh, how Valve does it because this import script does not import a smoothing groups unfortunately. So uh, what I'm going to do is <coughs> I'm just going to up, up quickly apply uh, some automatic smoothing to just get some eye candy here. So if you go into the modifiers tab, clicking this little wrench, you can click add modifier edge split and what it's doing is it's just whenever an angle is greater than um, 30 degrees it marks a sharp angle here and you can change that angle I'm just going to change it to 45 so it's it's I mean uh, usually uh, the developer will uh, mark uh, sharp edges uh, manually and in Blender it's very easy and I'll, sh I'll explain how to do that uh, later in this tutorial but as for now I'm just going to leave it like that select the bone rig. This is the these are all the bones. This, this is what basically controls the character. Um, whenever animators are animating they use the rig to animate. Um, and, and we're going to duplicate um, the the rig by pressing shift D. So if you press shift D you'll notice that you have a duplicate. So you can just press zero and hit enter. So that duplicates it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hide the uh, the old one. Just select the old one by going up here click heavy model and just press H that hides it. It's not there anymore. I mean, if you can move this around, you see it's not there anymore. So uh, now select the uh, the rig. Go into uh, edit mode. Find the bone that says BIP underscore head. Um, this is the uh, bone that's used when you're uh, that the hats attached to. So hats attached to this bone. They're whenever you, they're made. Uh, they're always in with respect to this bone. So any um, uh, like scaling or rotating or anything, it's always with respect to the BIP head bone. There is a uh, exception. This is the sniper. The sniper uses a different bone. It's called PRP underscore hat. So just keep that in mind. If you're making a sniper hat, you want the PRP hat bone, not the BIP head. So find the BIP head and now select every single other um, uh, uh, every single other bone part that that's not that. So to select things, you just press B, um, and you can select a lot of things at once. Or what you can do is you can right-click while holding Shift for every single one, but that's not recommended. So just use the B and select everything, and delete everything except the BIP head. So you should be left with just the BIP head bone. So go back into object mode by pressing Tab, select it by right-clicking it. Go in, go over here and just rename it BIP head just for good measure. Uh, now we're going to begin actually modeling our hat. So I'm going to model a, I'm going to model a blender hat. So we're going to add a primitive. So you can just left click to say where you want the primitive to be uh, spawned, and click Shift A to create your primitive. So in the mesh. Um, uh, menu, you just, I'll add a cylinder. You can add whatever you want. So I'm going to add a cylinder. And over here, uh, you can change the options. So I'm going to change it to 32 vertices and 
that, that looks good. So in this view, I'm just going to scale it, pressing S, scaling it down like so. I'm going to move it here. I'm going to get it nice and just like perfect. Okay. So that added that part. Now we're going to select it, right click it, go into um, edit mode, and we're going to do a couple of things. Here. We're going to add an edge loop by clicking Control R, and as you can see, it creates this little purple outline. And what this does is it's going to cut it in that specific spot. So if I scroll up or down, that's how many cuts it's going to do. So I'm going to cut it twice, I'm scrolling once. I'm going to scale this by pressing S in just, and I'm going to middle mouse click to scale it only in, in the uh, y, uh, Z axis. So I'm going to scale it like this. And I'm going to scale it overall like that, so it gives it a nice like bevel shape. And that's good. Okay, now before I go on, I'm going to explain smoothing. I touched upon it on the heavy. Um, I'm going to explain it in detail now. Uh, smoothing in Blender is quite easy. Just go into edit mode. Uh, actually, before you go into edit mode, select the this part only by right-clicking it. And over here you can see uh, this the shading option. If you click smooth, it shades the entire thing with using the, sh the, s the smooth um, instead of flat. Flat is f the showing every single uh, polygon as faceted, where smoothing smooths everything. But we it looks kind of awkward all smooth, especially if you're dealing with like cylinders like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into here, add a modifier, and apply an edge split modifier. It c you can have it automatically smooth based on edge angles like for example the before we did 45 degrees or what you can do is we can turn that off and do it manually and when you're when you're doing more complicated models manually is the, this is the way to go so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this edge loop by pressing alt and right clicking right in the middle between two vertices and it just selects the entire edge and I'm gonna press control E to mark sh a sharp edge it's not mark seam is for something else you wanna click mark sharp and it will draw this little red um, sharp edge there uh, and do the same over here mark sharp and as you can see now what it did is because we set the modifier the edge split modifier to mark sharp edges it smooths everything except for these uh, sharp edges now what the smooth actually does is it doesn't actually smooth the objects uh, like mesh so it's not actually um, changing the the the, the uh, the object's mesh. It's just changing how light is displayed. So the light is consistent from this uh, rectangle to this uh, polygon right here. So these two polygons are like smoothed in with respect to the light. So now we have the this sharp edge right here. As you can see, this is a sharp edge, and then this one over here. Now, we're going to complete this hat, so I'm going to press Shift A. I'm going to add another cylinder. Again, change this to 16. Um, going to rotate it uh, with this axis. If you type in a number, like 90 degrees, you can get it a specific angle. So I'm just going to change some things here, move that there. If you press Z, you can get into wireframe mode. And uh, and this is the part where uh, the x-ray uh, limit comes in handy. See, I can see into this even though it's behind something. So I'm going to select everything by pressing B, selecting this, press G to move it out, and we're going to start creating this hat model. So before we do that, notice how th th all of these faces, there's 16 triangles here, and they're all being rendered even though I can't see them because when I can't see them, but they're being rendered. So it's, it's, um, it's useless to have those there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this middle vertice right here and delete it delete vertices and it just automatically deletes all these faces so now uh, it's not rendering those so it's 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 um it's more optimized that way uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to teach you how to extrude things so select this these these vertices right here and press E E to extrude as you can see it just creates um, more new this new edge right there so you just I'm going to extrude this scale it down one more time, extrude it one more time, and move that there. All right. So now we just basically created this little a soft end rather than a hard end, and we're just going to click set smooth to smooth it out. As you can see, that that looks really looks better. Um, 
now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create um, duplicates of this so before we do that we're going to go into object snap cursor to select it so it's going to it's going to snap it to its midpoint right there so press shift D to duplicate this press R and 45 to rotate it at a 45 degree angle Z to go into x-ray mode and just move it like that uh, one more time shift D R negative 45 this time to get it into negative 45 degree angle move that there okay look looking good I'd say that's nice and good okay now that we have our basic model completed um, what we're going to do is we're going to unwrap it and what unwrapping does is it takes the 3d mesh and it unwraps it onto a 2d coordinate system for texturing so down here in this view click the little cube for the 3d view and change that to UV slash image editor and that pulls up a grid that's what we want this is the UV image space um, there are automatic ways of doing this but I recommend uh, sticking uh, sticking with the uh, manual way for now so you can learn uh, UV unwrapping is is a complicated thing and learning you really have to just check out the linked tutorials to fully understand how to do it but um, for now just right click the uh, base cylinder go into edit mode and we are going to unwrap this as if we're cutting it at certain places so we're cutting it at certain places and it's just going to fold out onto a 2d space so it, it just so happens to be that these mark sharp edges also are going to be our unwrapping places so just select the this edge again and this time when you press control E instead of marking sharp mark a seam so it marks a seam there and likewise mark a seam there and mark a seam at the bottom here like this so so it's just cutting this also mark that as a seam and so what it's going to do is it's going to make two two uh, actually whoops uh, don't mark that seam mark this is a seam select this right here and select that by select this and this by right click right clicking while holding shift down and mark that as a seam so you'll see now that what it's going to do is it's going to unwrap this as a circle it's going to unwrap that as a circle and it's going to take this part right here and it's going to unwrap it like a rectangular strip it's going to cut it right here so <clears throat> what we're going to do is now select everything by pressing a and press U, click unwrap, and long and behold, just what I said, it did exactly what I wanted it to do. So if you click here, this island select mode, you can just move the UVs around, just how you want them. We want it to be fully optimized, so make it as big as you possibly can without getting outside of the um, coordinate space. Um, and now we're going to unwrap these little other cylinders so these ones are easy it only needs one seam so go into a side where it's gonna be hard to see the seams so that the user can't really see where the texture lines up this is a handy way select that edge by pressing alt and right click and then mark that seam and do the same for each one go into edit mode mark seam there just check it uh, and then this one mark seam there okay <clears throat> and now unwrap each of them select all by pressing A then press U unwrap and then you'll see it takes up a large space so scale that down move that to the side do the same thing unwrap scale it down move to the side unwrap scale it down move to the side okay now that we have everything unwrapped what we're going to do is we're going to select all the parts and we're going to join them so select all the parts by by shift selecting everything make sure they're all together by moving it around and press control J now they're all um, together and what what you saw what happened is um, the marked sharp edges that we had before are now gone so you can just quickly reapply that by clicking add mod modifier edge split and just checking off edge angle so it just it preserves where we had the marked sharp um, and now if you go into edit mode you can see that now all the UVs are in one coordinate space which is exactly what we want so move those around to how you want them we can't have anything overlapping and I'll explain to you why that is 
Um, you can technically have overlapping UVs, but that's for a later tutorial, perhaps. I can explain that. Um, and just move those to where you want them. Okay, so now that we have everything nice and perfect in this uh, space, just quickly uh, recalculate all the normals. So that in case when you were modeling, some normals were flipped, i.e. the, f the uh, face where it's drawing is pointing inwards rather than outwards, you can, sh you can quickly fix that by uh, over here it's where it says normals, you just click recalculate. And it just recalculates everything, just for good me measure. And um, now what we're going to do is, uh, over here in the UV coordinate space, click New. And the default is 1024 by 1024. That's a lot. We can leave it like that for now, but um, when you're actually modeling a hat, you're going to want it to be a very small texture, like 256 by 256. And we can adjust that later, but for now, we'll just leave it at 1024. So click OK. Um, and uh, so it just applied a blank back black texture. And you can see the texture by over here in the 3D view. If you click this little circle, you can change it to textured view. And you can see it's just, just black. Okay. So go back into edit mode. And what we're going to do is we're going to bake it, which is pre-rendering shadows, which is the cool part. So go into the camera tab, click this uh, bake. Uh, uh, menu right there, and click Bake Mode, Ambient Occlusion, change the margin to 8, uh, go into this World tab, click Ambient Occlusion, check the amb Ambient Occlusion light on, turn Approximate on, check Pixel Cache, and change the correction to 1. Now what we do is when we click Bake down here in the Camera tab, if we click Bake, watch as it pre-renders the shadows onto this um, texture. This is actually very cool. I like watching when it does this. So now as you can see in the textured view, it even though it looks like what I'm looking at is the solid object, it's actually I'm just looking at the texture. And um, as you can see it's it's just this pre-rendered shadow. So it does that for you. It's very very cool. Um, and one last thing before we finish this part of the tutorial is you have to make sure that the rotation, scale, and location and location for this hat is all um, standard with respect to this bone. So you can go ahead and uh, press N to pull up uh, this menu right here and change all of the locations to zero and change all of the rotations to zero and change all the scales to one. Okay. And you're thinking, where'd my hat go? Well, it's down here. And what what I just did is it, it just um, m moved everything with respect to the world. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to just, you can press N again to get rid of that menu. Now this is extremely important. In edit mode, not object mode, in edit mode, select everything and move it back to where you wanted it initially. So move everything back and rotate it back to how you wanted it initially. So I'm just going to rotate it like this. I'm going to rotate it like... Uh, one second. I'm going to rotate it this way and move it here, scale everything down. All right. Now if you go back into object mode, you can you can see that the um, or before I do that, I'm just going to make sure it's on top of his head. Remember all in all in edit mode. Okay. Goody. So it's nice and where I want it. That's how, that's where I want the hat to be. So once I have this hat um, positioned in edit mode, you can go back out into object mode, and we are done for this part. Uh, you want to save this file, file, save as, and remember that folder we created at the beginning of the tutorial. Uh, find it on your desktop. I'm gonna, I call it Blender Heavy, and just save this file as whatever you want. So Blender heavy.blend. Save that. Alright. Um, uh, see the next part of this tutorial for texturing and exporting. Alright, so uh, we had this. Um, this is the part where we left off. Um, and the next parts are 
relatively simple. We're just going to texture this. And as you can see, the, the texturing here, it, it just gets wrapped back around the 3D model. And so all we're, all we're basically doing is we're just taking this, this pre-rendered shadow and we're just texturing right on top of it. That's, it's, it's really simple. So select your model, go into edit mode, and we're going to save this image. Save this, save as, uh, go to the folder that you created. Um, where is it? And save it as uh, Blender underscore heavy underscore AO, which stands for ambient occlusion, just whatever. You can just save that. It'll save it as a PNG. And next thing you can do is go to UVs, export layout, and name it Blender heavy underscore UV for UV. And you just save that. Okay. Uh, so we saved those two. We saved the uh, image, and then we saved where the UV coordinates are. This, um, so good. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to actually texture it. So close that out. Go open the folder that you had, and open these two in your favorite uh, image editing software. So I'm going to use Photoshop because I love Photoshop. And you can just open up the AO. Actually, open up the yeah, open up the AO in. in uh, Okay, well, um, uh, so put that at the very top. Just color this. Oh, whoops. Uh, uh, fill the out out the back with black, and um, merge these two layers, and set that to multiply. So you get an image that looks like this. Now, open your UV right on top of that. That's perfect. That's just how we want it. And now every other layer is going to go below this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to color this the traditional um, like orange color. So, you know, whatever. Uh, I guess this is... It's not going to be perfect, but, you know, you just color it orange. And um, as you can see, you can check to see it by just turning this on and off. Uh, this is just for a reference. Uh, usually, I turn this to multiply too, so it looks. Um, it look. I can see how it looks like. Uh, now, just continue your texturing. I'm gonna change this to white. Get this nice in the middle. You know, just. When, not, when, you're, when I'm actually making a, like a like a real hat, something that I'm eventually going to submit to Valve, I will spend a lot of time on this part. This part, a, a a bad texture can make a good model, you know, fail. So remember, texturing is also extremely important. Don't uh, don't blow this off be just because it might be easier. Um, when you're actually texturing, uh, make sure that um, what you're doing is consistent with Valve's. Um, um, uh, you know, you know, style, the Team Fortress 2 style. Uh, I know that many people argue that TF2 might not have a style as of recent updates, but you still must make sure to um, stay consistent because, you know, no one likes a, a goofy looking hat or whatever. So, um, <laughs> very ironic that we're making a goofy looking hat. Anyway, um, so once you have that, um, you have your texture. You can just turn off this UV layer, and you can just you know take a preview and look if everything's okay and whatnot. And uh, before we continue, I never touched upon this in my first video, but if you go into the channels tab, I'm not sure how this works in GIMP, but if you go into the channels tab, you can see that there's individual channels. And what you can do with uh, channels is you can use this channel to to tell the tech, the VTF texture when we eventually make that, what parts of the model you want to be shiny or not. So what we're going to do is we're just going to duplicate any one of these layers. Let's just say this one. Name it alpha. And uh, as you can see, if we're going to use this as a Fong mask, Fong lighting is, uh, well, I'm not going to explain it, but basically it's just how this uh, event, um, Basically, uh, the, the black parts are not shiny. The white parts are shiny. And if we use, if we in the VMT, if we 
explicitly say that we want this alpha channel to be the Fong mask. It will use this mask to make parts that are white shiny and parts that are dark less shiny. So you can just click this again to go back. We have the alpha channel now. Everything looks good. Um, so we're just going to save this. Save as. Now this part's important. Uh, save as a Targa, TGA. And we're going to name this exactly what we want the VMT of our texture to be. So if, if we're naming it blenderheavy.tga, the VMT in the later parts of, the, of this tutorial must be named blender underscore heavy dot VMT. So that's very important. If you don't do that, your model will not show up in game. So say, I'm just going to save that. Save it as 32 bits per pixel. Press OK. Uh, so you can minimize that. And as you can see, it's right here. So <clears throat> go back into Blender and click in the UV coordinates, click Image, Open, BlenderHeavy.TGA, and click Open. And if you go into the Texture Preview, you can see now that it textured it using our uh, texture. That's pretty cool. Uh, okay. Now what you can do is uh, sometimes I might not be satisfied with what I have here. So what you could do is you just go back into this program, make some changes or whatever, save it again, and then once you have it saved, uh, if you go into ta if you go into uh, edit mode, if you press Alt R, it refreshes the image. So that's so that's easy. Uh, um, <clears throat> and now that everything is pretty much done for the texturing part, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to hide the heavy by selecting the heavy press H and we're going to assign this bone to this model and the way we do that is we just select both the um, the, the, the bone and the uh, the model and we okay before we do that uh, we're going to we, uh, we want this to have a specific model name so just go into the um, object panel and name this Blender Heavy. And that's what our SMD is going to be named. So once we have that, uh, actually, okay, I'm going ahead myself. Also, after you do this, click this uh, material tab, click new, uh, name this what you named your texture. So Blender Heavy dot TGA. Must have the TGA there. Um, if the texture name is too long, rename your texture something else. Uh, and you can change it later. Um, so once you have that, if you go down here and you press face textures, you can see your hat, you can see a preview of your hat. Just press Control alt 0 to get the camera focused in on that specific part, and then you can press F12 to render it. Uh, if my computer will not blow up. Okay, well, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it's not. It won't actually look like that in game. It's just um, that was just a quick render. Um, okay. So uh, now we're going to parent this to the hat bone. So ah, my computer's lagging. Sorry. Uh, so select the bone, then select the model, and press Control P to set the parent. To, okay. One second. Yeah, okay, my bad. You, you select the hat first, and then you select the uh, the bone, and then you press Control P. Oops, and you click uh, uh, with empty groups right here. So just, and now as you can see, if you go into the, um, if you select your hat and you go into the modifiers tab, you can see that what it did is it added a mo amateur modifier to this, and it, it uh, and uh, now we're going to. Uh, change some things so go into the object data tab and cl click this vertex group and go into edit mode and click assign okay and that should the weight must be one so make sure that says one and if it worked you should be able to see that clicking select and deselect selects the model so now what it did is it basically just assigned this bone to this hat and we are good to export so after that's good, select just the hat model and go to File, Export, 
Studio MDL Data, and then click this one, not the scene. And go to the the folder that we, we want it. And you just click Export SMD. And everything, if everything worked properly, you should see that in the folder we created, it created the Blender Heavy SMD. And if you check, if you write, if you open this with Notepad plus plus, if everything worked properly, this is how it looks like. Uh, it assigned the, the bone properly right here, and it also assigned the texture properly. Blender Heavy TJ. If it does, if it has like some file path or whatever, you did it wrong. It should just say the name of the the texture file. And basically what it's doing is it's just applying the texture to every single polygon. That's why you have this huge file. So that's that's what it's doing. So you can just uh, close close that. And it worked properly, so that's good. Um, and that was actually a very short part of the tutorial. Um, I, can, uh, but I guess I can explain how to create the VTF now. So um, to create the VTF, um, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to extract uh, a VTF and VMT from the um, from the from the G the TF2 GCF. So just open up GCF, click Open TF2 Materials, go to TF Materials Models Player Items and Heavy. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to find a VMT and a VTF that are that use the same sort of shading that we want in game. So if I want my hat to look like to use the same shading materials as the football helmet, I would you know take these two and I would just drag them out here. Okay, and you can close that. And as you can see, this is the football helmet VTF. Um, reason it looks like this is because paint. Um, paint application works like that. Um, I'm not going to explain how paint works because that is going to be for some later tutorial perhaps. And you, if you open up the VMT you can see that this is how everything is applied. So it's saying uh, this is the base texture, this is the texture it uses. If it's less than DX9 then you use this texture instead, it uses this bump map, etc, etc, etc. And um, for instance, uh, if you... Ooh, let me see. Well this hat doesn't use it, but for example, if I wanted the alpha map fong mask, if I wanted to use the alpha channel t to be a fong mask, I would have in the VMT somewhere uh, a line that says base map alpha fong mask 1. And I'll, I'll show you how to do that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to edit this to be what we want. So you can just delete this DX9 stuff. We're not going to cater to DX9 people, I mean DX8 people because they have outdated computers and they better update their stuff because eventually okay I'm not gonna rant anyway <clears throat> so we're gonna name it heavy and then this is important blender heavy needs to be this okay this is how it was before needs to be blender heavy because uh, what we named the texture uh, of the TGA we need to name it in the VMT so we're naming it blender heavy and if everything is good, uh, we can just save this as Blender Heavy in our Blender Heavy folder. You can just save that as a VMT. Needs to be Blender Heavy. Needs to be Blender Heavy. Do not forget this. Okay? Needs to be the same name as what you named the TGA. You see these two? The same. Okay, many people forget this, and I get a hundred million questions about that. So I'm not going to answer those questions if you don't get it the first time. Um, and some other things is we're just going to remove this because this deals with paint, and um, everything else looks good. I think you can also delete this. I think that also deletes with paint. Uh, okay, so just save that. Now open up VTF Edit and import the TGA that we made, the Blender Heavy TGA. And um, I use these settings. Default settings are the best. This is for like super high, you know, high res textures. This is kind of bad. I know it's taboo to use high textures without any MIP maps, but 
use the default ones so that you do create those. And you'll see the texture shows up here. This is a huge texture. What I should have done is I should have um, scaled this down to 512. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to go into Photoshop. I'm going to change the size to 256 by 256 actually. It's going to be smaller, much smaller, but it won't have that big of an effect as you'll see. And I'm going to save this as a .tga. I'm going to save it right back over that. And just to quickly demonstrate in Blender, if I press Alt-R to update this image, you can see that it literally almost did nothing to the re resolution. It, because a hat like this should not use huge textures because f viewed from far away and relatively up close, it pretty much stays the same. So um, file, import the new TGA, and you'll see it's much smaller. Save this as Blender heavy if my computer does not freeze. Okay. Uh, let's save that. Now as you can see you have one uh, VMT and one VTF and this is the these are the files that uh, source uses to read the texturing. And that is all for uh, this part of the tutorial and I will explain how to uh, do exporting and compiling, I mean uh, just compiling in the third part. So yeah. Alright, so uh, this part will deal with compiling. Um, should be relatively simple. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to create the folders of where our textures and our model files are going to go. Now, GUI Studio MDL does not automatically create those folders for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to create those manually. So um, go into your uh, Steam slash Steam app slash your username, Team Fortress 2, TF, um, find the materials folder, and from here uh, what you're going to do is you're, it, depending on if you've had any custom skins before, this might be an empty folder. But in your materials folder, Create a folder that calls that that are uh, that is called models, and then in that folder, create a folder that's called player. Create a folder called items. Create a folder called heavy, and then drag and drop your Blender heavy, um, uh, or you can copy and paste those uh, VMT and VTF files into here. So they're just there. Okay, that's that's where they're going to be located, and we tell. We tell GUI Studio MDL where those files are located in the file in the QC file, and I'll talk about the QC file later. QC stands for Quake C. It's the it's the language used for this type of modeling, and it's very easy. So, <clears throat> so uh, after that, uh, go and go back to your TF folder, and this time instead of opening up the materials folder, go to models. Do the same thing. If you don't have these folders already, uh, go to player or create them player. Um, sorry, my computer's lagging. Items, uh, heavy, and you should have nothing in here. Um, I already created this hat before I made the tutorial. Just, but anyway, there should be nothing in here. But just have this folder created. Have the cr heavy folder created. So you can just close that. Um, and now the cool part: open up GCFscape. Go to. Um, find the Team Fortress 2 materials GCF, go to TF, uh, models this time, player, items, heavy, and find the hat that you want this to replace. So, I don't know, uh, the Yushanka or something maybe? How about that? Let's, let's do the Yushanka. Where is it? Here it is. So find all the ones that say Yushanka. You should have uh, six files. The DX81, the DX91, the MDL, which is the actual model file, the physics file, and this VTX and VVD file. So take those and drag them into the input folder that we created at the very beginning of this tutorial. And you can close that. Now what we're going to do is we're going we're to hex the MDL file. So right-click the MDL file, go to Edit with Notepad++, and this is a very important step as well. It says IDST0. Change the 0 to a comma to a comma and save it. Okay? And now you can close that. And we're good. Uh, 
Now open up MDL decompiler and uncheck all of these boxes. Uncheck them all. Okay? You don't want any of those checked. And click where it says choose model file and find the hexed MDL. It should be in your input folder. Select that and click output and go to the blender heavy folder and this time just select the output folder and click select. And now when you click extract it should say loaded model and this MDL and you just click OK. It, said, it says completed dumping model and you just hit exit. Now on the output folder you see these files here um, and this is this is what should happen if you did it correctly. You can just delete this physicsmodel.smd. You just delete that if my computer will not lag on me. Uh, sorry about that. And delete that. You can rename this QC. This is the QC file I was talking about, QuakeC. Just rename it whatever. I'm going to name it Blender Heavy. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to re go back into the Blender folder. And the SMD that we created earlier, just copy and paste that into the output folder. And you can also delete this. You can delete this. But first what we're going to do is we're going to rename this to whatever this is. So since this is called heavy underscore yushanka underscore reference dot dmx dot smd, we're going to rename that this. So before I do that, I'm just going to rename this like one so that it doesn't conflict with the name. So it's, I'm going to name it heavy underscore. Actually, you know what? You don't need to do that. I'm. What am I talking about? Okay. I'm. I'm. I'm sorry. You don't need to do that. Just open up the QC. Um, and you, you'll see this is this is what it's doing. Um, there's a couple of things that were automatically generated that we don't need. For example, this CD materials double quotes. It's already taken care of here. I don't know why it creates it twice. You can just delete that line. Delete a loom position. We don't need that. Um, and then there's things we need to change. We, you can delete this line. This is not needed. This is a comment line. You can delete that. Where it says CD materials. Remember when we created uh, the uh, folder in in the TF uh, f a folder that was a uh, materials models player items heavy. This is just saying that that's where we put our uh, VMT and VTF. And s since we're staying consistent with how Valve does it, we it it automatically knew that we put the VTF there. So that's good. Um, and then where it says the model name, this is what the uh, the G, uh, this is what the QC is going to use to compile the model. So since we're not using this one anymore, we're using this one, just change the name of that. So just delete this, change it to blender heavy.smd and save it. And also we're going to use the same model f as our physics model. So down here where it says collision model, replace whatever that was in there before with blender heavy.smd. Save that. And you, the idle.smd is just the idle animation. Um, I usually just keep that, the decompiled one there. You can delete this now. We don't need this. Um, and um, everything should be in order um, once you have everything down here. If you want to make a skin for this model, uh, skins are, or skin families, sorry, my bad. Skin families are when you have two different versions, if you have a blue team and a red team version. And the way you do that is, um, back when we were making a texture, all you do is you just create another texture, save it as, um, like, blender heavy underscore blue instead of red. And the red one always comes before the blue one. So uh, what we're going to do is, let's say I made, um, uh, okay. I have to find one that uses... Okay. Okay. One second. I always forget this. I have to open up one of my old ones to figure this out. Uh... Okay. This is how you sort of set it up. It looks like... This is the part where you have to pay attention to. Uh, texture group skin families. And whatever is in here is the red texture and whatever is in here is the blue texture and all you do is you just create another VMT and another VTF put those in your materials models player items heavy folder and it automatically knows um, that that's those are the files that you're talking about so um, it will replace the 
the skin with the blue version when you're on blue team. So that's all. I don't I don't have two skins for this model, so I'm not going to bother with that. So once you have everything that looks like this, uh, we're good and we're ready to compile. So you can. I mean, I don't really know why I close that. It's not necessary to close it anyway. So once you have that, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to open up GUI Studio MDL. If you are opening this for the first time, you will get a message that says blah 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 we don't have the file path set or whatever so what you're going to do is just go to configure you can set the it doesn't the episode one doesn't matter set the orange box tools path and choose the correct tools path it, it tells you in the uh, readme file I don't remember exactly what it was I did this a long time ago but it's pretty simple once you have all that set up click orange box down here for the SDK version choose team fortress 2 and go to file load QC and go to the QC that we created. So the Blender Heavy, go to Output and click the Blender Heavy QC. So now when you click Compile, everything should work. And scroll up to make sure you don't have any errors. I don't think I have any errors. Well, that's good. Usually it doesn't work on the first time. If it didn't work for the first time, don't worry. My first model didn't work either. Uh, so to check to make sure that this worked, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the source SDK. So tools, source SDK. And go to the model viewer. And go to file, load model. And go to where, wherever wherever the model was, was made. So wait, before I do this, um, it, remember when we... Uh, when we created that folder in our TF folder, the Team Fortress 2 TF models, player, items, heavy. Look, it created new files. Um, if we sort this by type. Uh, actually, well, date modified. Okay, so uh, here you can see it created six new. Uh, Yushanka files right here. These are the new ones, and what it's going to do is it is it's going to replace. It okay. So the GCF is never edited. We can't edit the GCF. If you do that, you get vac banned, because that's editing core game files. But what it's doing is we created new ones in our client side folder, um, and so what it does is when the game runs, is it just sees that we have files here, and instead of ta uh, taking from the GCF, it's just going to take it from here. So because we did that. Uh, in game, whenever someone's wearing the Yushanka, it'll show up as our hat. Now there are some restrictions on this, like when the server is using SV Pure, uh, uh, it might it it will read files from the GCF rather than from your uh, folder. That's why when sometimes your skins or whatever that you have installed don't show up, that's the reason. So as you can see, it created those files uh, just as we want them. So now if you go into the Half Life Model Viewer and you click Load Model, you go to Player items, heavy, and you scroll down to, what do we name it, blender hat or something, or a Yushanka, where's the Yushanka, heavy Yushanka, so if we load the heavy Yushanka, as you can see, um, okay, we'll turn on normal mapping, um, okay, uh, it's obviously not, for some reason, as you can see, it's not orange, even though our texture show, is showing up as orange, and the reason for this is um, the VTF that we used uh, dealt with paint, and painting is very, it's, it's kind of complicated. I don't understand it fully myself either. So what we're going to do is we're just going to find a, we're going to find a texture that doesn't use paint. So open up GCFscape. Oh, not, not that. Open up GCFscape. Um, go to... Team Forges 2 materials, TF materials, uh, models, player, items, and find a go to all class and find a hat that's not paintable. Like for example, the towering pillar of hats. This this shouldn't this okay. So just uh, open up. Okay, just drag this out here. I'm pretty sure this one doesn't use paint, and it doesn't. So that's good. Uh, just copy and paste the contents of this, and you can close that. Open up your uh, TF folder, go into your materials, models, 
um, items. Oh no, uh, sorry, materials, models, uh, player items, heavy. Open up the Blender heavy material file. Select everything and just paste whatever that was, and then just change the file path to whatever yours was again. So heavy dash blender heavy you can save that you don't have to do anything else you don't have to recompile it. and you just go back here and just refresh it there we go shows up nice so now if you go to load model and you load the heavy model so you go to load model and then player heavy where's our heavy there we are um, I'm going to go to center view. Okay, I guess it doesn't work. Unload weapon for now. Okay. Okay, so just move them around. And now if you go to file, load weapon, player, items, heavy, and you go to the Ushanka, it will load the hat. Um, and there we are. It loaded the hat. Uh, and that's how it looks like. And in game, it will just replace the Ushanka. And uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, if you have any errors, uh, I get I can make a frequently asked questions section again. Um, I'm planning on talking about or make making another tutorial on how to uh, do like multiple textures or multiple skins or maybe transparent textures. Transparent textures are relatively easy. Uh, if you're making a weapon model replacement, pr the procedures are all the same, except for instead of replacing, instead of deleting everything of the hat bone, the, the, B the BIP head, you just delete everything except the weapon bone. Uh, so, yeah.